Okay, so here we go. Here's the question two from our quadratics uh, topic system. And we're going to start with part A and we'll see how we get on and whether we need to uh, start a new page. Okay, so the first one says, and it's important, it says 2a solve the equation 4x squared plus 12x equals 0. That's worth three marks. And that, it stops there. So that's really important. It's almost like there's a dividing line. This next bit is important information you need before you can do part B. But actually, it says to do that and it tells us the marks, which means that part A is up here. So this is what we need to do. We don't need to go down and look at this f of x or anything yet. So let's get going. So it tells us 4x squared plus 12x equals 0. And if you remember from before, you may have or may not have watched that video, solutions uh, to a quadratic can be done in one of three ways. We can factorise it, we can use the formula, or we can complete the square. Complete. Oh, my right is getting a bit dodgy. Complete square. So let's look at this. It is a quadratic, so we are expecting uh, two solutions, maybe not uh, two real solutions or two different real solutions, but we're expecting two answers potentially. We'll get more into the imaginary numbers at some other point maybe. Um, so we can tell this quadratic because the highest power is 2, so we're looking for up to two answers, two real answers, and let's try and factorise it. So it's not got the three terms unlike the second bit. But this bit's even easier. This has got a common factor. It's got a common factor of 4x, which makes our life much easier. So we just have to have that. And then we know that that bit is equal to 0, or that bit is equal to 0. We've got two different distinct, it's almost like two brackets. So we know that 4x is 0, or we know that x plus 3 is 0. Okay, so just like when we did two brackets. You know, well, the only way to solve this one here is x to be 0, and the only way to solve this one here is x to be minus 3. Okay, so this is part of first part of question 2. I'm just going to move on to page. Um, and now let's look at part 3, uh, part three, part b. This one says, Given that f of x equals 0 has equal roots, find the value of this and this. But first of all, it's given us information, it told us what f of x. Now this just f of x means function of x. That's what f of x means. It means function of x. It just means that you put a value of x in and you get uh, a value, sometimes often y, we Put, uh, but not always, we put a value of x in and we get an answer out, so we can work out what this is, this is, and add on c, and we'll get a an number answer for, for for the function. Okay, it tells us c is a constant, so c is a number. Now it tells us that f of x is naught, so it tells us that we want to solve this. We want to solve that equals naught. Well, we know there's three methods of solutions. We just talked about that. Let's go back a page. We know we want to factorise, use the formula, or complete the square. And we know we're going to have up to two real solutions. So again, um, and it tells us, well, it tells us that it has equal roots. So it tells us something very important. It tells us that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, if it's got equal roots, we know this is equal to zero because it's got equal roots and we know that a is 4, b is 12 and c is happens to be c. So I can rewrite this discriminant b squared minus 4ac replacing with the numbers where I can. So that means I get 144 minus 4 lots of 4 which is my a and multiply that by c which is just C. So I get 144 minus 16C 
is equal to zero, or 144 is equal to 16c. That leaves me with my value of c, which is 9. So this bit here was absolutely key. This bit here, my discriminant is equal to zero. And lots of people don't write that down, they just write the discriminant. But we know it's equal to zero because it says it's got equal roots. If b squared minus 4ac was greater than zero, that means there were two different roots or two different real roots. And if it was less than zero, there will be no real roots. But that piece, key piece of information tells us that. Okay, so let's just uh, let's put a dividing line down here. And that's the first bit. Find the value of c. So we've done that bit. And hence, that just means, and therefore, or following on from what you've just done, solve f of x equals 0. So we know that f of x, we know that f of x is 4 squared plus 12. Oh, wow. A bit of lag on my computer there. Plus 12x plus our value of c, which we worked out to be 9, is equal to 0. So now asking us to solve that. Three methods of solution. Let's try and factorize first. Okay. Oh, and I know something else. I know that it has equal roots when f of x is 0, which is here, it has equal roots. So it means the two brackets are going to be the same. So I know it's not going to be 4x and x, although normally it could be. I know in this case, because there's got to be the same, I know that helps me out. It's going to be 2x and 2x. And that also means the last number, could be, when it could be normally 1 and 9 or 3 and 3, because they're the same. I know that's going to be like that. And if you multiply that and check, you can see that both brackets are the same. Or, if you want it to be really funky, you can say that 2x plus 3 all squared. Now, the only way this uh, is equal to 0, so the only way all of this is equal to 0 is if 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, or x is equal to minus 3 over 2. Okay, all done.